Welcome to today's ILTA YouTube video, how to create a chatbot driven knowledge base in SharePoint. My name is Amit Patney and I'm a solution architect at Microsoft. As a quick recap, this is the three part series uh, in, and in our previous video, I went over on how to provision a bot in Copilot Studio. And today I will be demonstrating how to configure the security settings in Copilot Studio and also in Azure so that this part is able to utilize SharePoint as a knowledge source. Please be sure to look out for the last video in our upcoming session on how to publish the bot for end users. All right, so with that out of the way, let's start configuring the, um, the security settings. So on your browser, please navigate to the bot that you had previously provisioned. Um, I'm already there. You can, you can get to it by going to copilotstudio.microsoft.com. Um, and of course, you're going to need to log in with your M365 credentials. Once logged in, select settings. So here I'm going to select my bot. And once the bot shows up, let's go ahead and select settings. Security. And authentication. Now you will either have the authenticate with Microsoft pre-selected or authenticate manually um, selected with some some placeholder settings like you like in, like you can see in my instance um, for for our use case I'm going to be configuring the authenticate manually settings okay but before I configure these settings, let me talk a little bit about how to choose an authentication option based on your specific scenario, which is outside of the one that we are configuring today. Um, of course, Copilot Studio supports several authentication options. The first one is the no authentication, which basically means your Copilot doesn't require your users to sign in when they are going to be um, interacting with, with the agent or the bot. As you can imagine, an unauthenticated configuration means your co-pilot can only access public information and, and resources. This um, classic um, uh, chatbot configuration, of course, does not require any type of um, authentication. Now also bear in mind, selecting the no authentication option allows anyone who has a link to chat um, and to interact with your bot or, or copilot will be able to do so. So of course, we recommend you apply authentication, especially if you're going to be using your bot or your agent within your organization, or for specific set of users, um, along with other security and governance controls that come with Power Platform, which I'm not covering as part of this topic. The other option, the second option is to authenticate with Microsoft. Um, now with this option, um, it automatically applies and sets up Microsoft Entra ID authentication for Teams without the need for any manual um, configuration. And, and since Teams authentication itself identifies the, the user, the users are prompted to, um, uh, to sign in while they'll be interacting with this agent within Teams. Or unless your, your agent or your co-pilot uh, um, configuration requires an expanded scope. Of course, we're not going to get into that today either. Um, also, um, remember that the Teams channel is the only one that you can select with this option. Um, so 
if you need to publish your copilot to other channels but still want your authentication for your agent or your copilot bot we should choose the authenticate manually option and which is the one that we're going to uh, going to be configuring today now a quick note about the uh, authentication providers that are supported with this uh, authenticate manually um, option so there's microsoft uh, the azure active directory azure active directory version 2 azure active directory version 2 with certificates and also generic oauth2 which is any identity provider that complies with the uh with the uh oauth2 standard now we'll be configuring these settings um a in the copilot studio uh settings itself uh, but we also need to go to um to azure portal and you can get to azure portal by typing in portal.azure.com um, in in another tab and there we're going to be registering a uh, an app uh, but before i do that let's switch this back to what i want to use which is the azure active directory version 2 and there are not too many pieces of information that I need. Um, once I do the app registration, I need to uh, generate a client ID and a client secret, which we'll do that um, next. So let's let's start configuring that option. Um, here I am in my Azure portal, um, and you can either search for app registrations up here on, on top. In my case, my card is already um, available or visible. So let's go ahead and click that. And uh, let's go ahead and create a new registration. Uh, give it the same um, application name that we have our bot as. I believe I have uh, legal services bot. And let's go ahead and specify um entra id as multi tenant option leave everything else as um as blank and just go ahead and click register let's go ahead and copy the application client id and navigate back into the copilot studio portal and paste the client um, application id in the client id field the next thing we need to do is we need to uh, create a client secret from, from the Azure app registration process. So let's navigate back. And this time I'm going to go to certificates and secrets. And I'm going to generate a new client secret. Uh, the description here does not matter. Um, you can change your expiration for as few or, or as long as you'd like. Um, I typically use the longest duration possible, so I don't have to keep redoing it. Um, but let's go ahead and click Add. And I'm going to copy the, the value field. Go back into Copilot Studio and paste the client secret. And now we need... Um, we need to still finish some additional configurations, but while I'm here, I am going to add additional scopes um, to this field here. So the additional scopes I want to do is um, I have I have email, I have open ID. Let's click on profile. Also select sites dot read all and files dot read all now um i'll put a link in um in this video here for you to um to find out what this means but for now i'm just going to keep moving forward these are my scopes that i want available 
And let's finish up the Azure app registration process. Um, next thing I need to do is select the um, token configuration, uh, actually authentication. And I'm going to go ahead and add a, um, a, a platform. The platform in this case is going to be web. Now I do need to go back into Copilot Studio and copy the redirect URL. You can just select the copy option. Go back into Azure App Registration, paste. And I'm going to grant access tokens and ID tokens and hit configure. And that should be it for the authentication option. The next thing we need to do is we need to configure some API permissions. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to add additional permissions here and the permissions we're going to select are for Microsoft Graph and it will be delegated permissions and from this list I'm going to match the scopes that I had um, entered previously and um, might go back and forth but from memory if I remember it's uh, I believe email it is open ID, it's profile. Um, and then let's go down the list here till we get to the one I'm looking for is a SharePoint. It's actually, um, yeah, these settings look good. Uh, it's actually the one next to it. So it's going to be sites, read all. And the next one should be files and files read all. And let's click on add permission. And while we are here, let's go ahead and grant admin consent. And I believe that should be it. So let's go ahead and go back here and hit save. Uh, yep, let's go ahead and hit save. And once we are done and um, get the message that the authentication settings have been saved, let's go ahead and and publish the bot so the changes can take effect. Okay, so that looks good. So at this point, we are ready to add a SharePoint site um, to a knowledge base. Um, but before we do that, let's just go ahead and, and test our settings out that the authentication settings have been set correctly. Um, so I'm going to just hit refresh here and the bot in the test pane is asking me to go ahead and log in. So let's do that. I'll get a token. I'm going to copy the token and paste it back into the bot. And if all the settings are correct, I, sh I should authenticate me. Th great. So there you go. It can read my name so it knows what user is logged in. So in, th in this case, it's, it's, uh, it's identifying me as that user. So at this point, we should be good to go to configure um, the SharePoint site, uh, which we'll do in our third video in our segment where I add the SharePoint site as a knowledge source. And then I'll uh, show you how to um, how to configure the bot to to use SharePoint sites to ask questions as a user, um, and then we'll finally publish the bot for uh, for use by users within my uh, within my organization. This brings us to the end of this video.
Please be on the lookout for the last one coming out in December, where I'll cover how to add a SharePoint site as the knowledge source. And also I'll go over some tips and tricks on how to uh, use this Copilot agent or this Copilot bot. Okay, thanks for your time. See you next month.